Hello everybody, nice to be back here. My name is Tim and today I want to talk about kinetic typography. I've just wrote a tutorial about that and I published it on my website um, and I thought it would be a good thing to have a complimentary video about that for those people who enjoy watching tutorial videos. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so basically it's all about animating type and um, this thing um, called kinetic typography is at the moment is very popular. Um, you can find lots of people on Instagram um, who uh, create experiments and and push their work to social media. But there are also some very interesting branding cases. Um, I want to mention Dia Studio here because these guys um, or Mitch Paoni um, particularly uh, well shaped how we think about kinetic typography in a special way right this guy just invented some approaches on doing that and i think this is a very very inspiring person and a very inspiring studio so check out dia.tv which is the website of dia studio so what we have to do to achieve this effect which is by the way the content of this tutorial we will cre recreate this um, visual and you know, well, this approach on moving typography uh, what we have to do to achieve this effect is we have to um, first draw this letter this lowercase a to a surface outside of the sketch window in this case we use a p graphics um, uh, object and put that A on it and then we have to um, split this surface into segments right and these segments um, and we will then copy these segments to our actual sketch and uh, well to get this wavy nice uh, distortion effect we will put a sine wave into the sketch or uh, sorry into the loop right into the two-dimensional loop which we use to draw this grid so this is going to be a lot of fun and uh, let's see how this actually works the copy function in processing is uh, one of the cooler things i've ever seen so um, basically here's a good example on how it works you know as you can see this this uh, little circle is the mouse position and in this sketch i've just copied a specific area of a photo and put it into my sketch window into the middle into a defined area and um, i just manipulated the source um, coordinates with a mouse so that's how this thing just uh, came to life and i think this explains pretty well how the copy function works all right, so now let's get started with creating the actual code for that sketch. Um, in my tutorial, I've got a few snippets here, a few code examples. And the first one is explaining how the copy function works. Well, basically, the copy function takes a source and a destination and copies the source to the destination then, right? So it's very simple. Um, and both of these um, blocks are defined by four parameters. First, the X position, then the Y position, and then the width, and then the height. In this case, the copy function would copy something from the sketch window to the sketch window, but that's not what we want, right? We want to copy something from another p-graphics element and put it onto our sketch. And um, that is exactly how this example works that I just showed you a few moments ago. So here I just copy something from an image to um, our actual sketch window. And to define the place where we want to copy from, we have to, to put another argument into our copy function. And this argument has to be the first one. So then at all, we've got nine arguments. So now that we understand how the copy function works, let's get started writing our actual sketch. First, I just, you know, I just, I'm just going to copy things now from the left to the right. So um, don't worry, this is no magic going on. I just um, want to avoid the noise when I write something on my keyboard. So first, I just create this p graphics element where we want to copy from, right? And then I, in, then I create the p font object. So the font we want to use, and then I open up the setup function here, and inside of the setup function, I'm going to create the font, right? The Roboto Mono Regular, which is the font I just copied, the font file I've just copied to the data folder before. And with a size function, I define the dimensions of my sketch. And I do the same for the p-graphics element, which is also, you know, which also takes the size and the renderer as an input. So by the way, um, make sure always if you work with the graphics element, make sure you define a renderer because otherwise uh, you get very ugly um, bugs and errors. Uh, that's just a quick tip here. 
So what we are going to do now, we will put that A, that letter A, onto our P graphics element, okay? So we first we have to open up our draw loop, right? So let's quickly type in the draw loop here, and then we define the uh, background to be black. Cool. So and now the following code is defining uh, where the A is drawn onto the P graphics element, right? So let's quickly go through it line by line. It's very simple. We just open up the P graphics loop, and this is, by the way, the way to access a P graphics element, right? So we begin the draw loop here, then we paint the background black, we fill everything in white that follows, um, and font this is the right way to access the font in this sketch sorry there was a little typo in here so we de define a text size and then we just open up a new matrix um, translate everything to the middle of the sketch and we align the text also in the middle and then we draw the letter a onto our sketch we close the matrix and then we end the draw loop of the p graphics element so now let's see if everything is in the right position. We can do it by using the image function here, right? Uh, with the image function, we can place the big graphics element into the top left of our sketch. And what I'm going to do now, I, I will run it and let's see if everything is in the right place. Awesome, that's exactly what I wanted to achieve. There's an A in the middle of the sketch, perfect. This is the blueprint. This is the template for um, our actual uh, kinetic typography visual okay so let's do something very nasty here let's just copy paste all the stuff from the left to the right which is you know this is the rest of the sketch we will write here uh, let's just take everything copy it to the right and go through it line by line don't worry you will understand it I'm very sure about that okay so what I do here first I define how many tiles I want to have on the x-axis okay and then in the second line here I define how many tiles I want to have on the y-axis these are two parameters you can play with later on then I calculate the height and width of the tiles this is important here because we need these variables in the loop. Then I wrap up the two dimensional loop here, right? And as you can see, I start with Y. For me, it feels more convenient, but you, of course, you can start with X, however, however you like it, okay? And the stuff you see here is exactly what we've been talking about a few moments ago. This is the copy function. And I'm defining that I'm take, that way I wanna take the P graphics element from above and put it into the copy function. This is the place where I wanna copy from. So I think it makes a lot of sense to think about how we distribute our tiles on the grid, right? Because this is a very basic operation and uh, it is very important that we understand what exactly is happening here. So let's just look at this source variables here. What we do here is defining the source x position, right? To be at x times tile width. That means um, the loop is going through all the tiles, but if we just would say that the source x is just x, then we would take the pixel number one, 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7, right? But, you know, we just would copy a very, very small part of the image onto our sketch, but that's not what we want. We want the, the right dimensions of the tiles, and that's why we have to calculate them by saying x times tile w, which uh, represents the width of the tile, right? And the same, uh, it's the same for the height. And um, if you look closer to the destination and the source and compare them, you will see that both definitions are the same, so that the source is exactly the same as the destination. So why is that and what does this um well let's maybe we just should, should check out how that stuff looks like let's quickly hit the run function bam all right what do we have we got here right we've got this a and it looks exactly the same as a few moments ago when we just put the image function onto our sketch why well because the source is equal to the destination these values are exactly the same values than here in the destination. And that is the problem because, you know, we are just copying something from somewhere and we're doing it by dividing the, the whole thing into tiles that's properly made here, but we don't um, uh, actually uh, manipulate the positions. 
Let's be a bit bold here and put some randomness into the source x um, variable, okay? So let's say integer and then random minus 100 and 100, okay? And let's, let's see what happens now. This is exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, let's go. All right. So <laughs> if you look, if, if you take a very close look onto that flickering image, or oh, let's maybe slow that down a little bit because it's much too fast. Frame rate, let's say five, five is better. So if you take a look on this flickering image, you will see the rectangle, rectangular pieces here, right? You, you, you can see the grid anyway. Uh, and what happens here is now, you know, the, the whoops, the tiles are just, um, or the fragments of the tiles are just moved to the left and the right um, by a random value between 100 and minus 100. That is not what we want. We want to have more control. You know, randomness is a little bit ugly. It's a little bit cheesy. We, we don't want to use randomness often. Right? That's what I think. We should use something that we can control, something that has an expression and a meaning and in a, in a character. Well, of course, sometimes the randomness is a good choice, but especially in this case, I would like to have a little bit more control. And this is the moment when the sign function comes into the play, because the sign function does something like, you know, it just puts a wave onto or with a sign function, we can put a wave into the grid and we can just adjust the X position of each tile um, by manipulating it with a wave. Let's quickly do that, okay? So um, I delete that again and let's define a variable. We call it integer, it's a wave. Uh, sorry, we call it wave, it's an integer. And we um, add this wave variable to our uh, source x position okay so integer wave is well how to do how to start that let's say it's a sine wave right maybe you've never worked with trigonometric uh, functions and methods in processing that's totally okay a sine function just generates a value between z minus one and one and um, we can use it to create waves basically i think this would be a very nice topic for a tutorial Maybe one day I will <laughs> I will create a tutorial about that. So in there we have to put something like a phase, something like not P P H A S E a phase, you know. And um, yeah, let's let's try that. Let's let's say um, the int the the wave shall uh, move between one hundred and yeah minus 100. So the sine wave creates um, a value between minus 1 and 1. And if we multiplicate this with 100, we get a value <laughs> between minus 100 and 100. All right. So let's make an integer here. Okay, cool. Um, so what we are doing now, we are putting a wave into the source x position. Okay, let's quickly run the sketch and see what happens. Oh my goodness, there is a, there's an A moving from the left to the right. That's not what we want, right? We just don't want to just move it. We want each tile to move slightly different. That's what we want. So how to do that? But at first, let's slow that stuff down because that was very, very fast. Let's say um, frame count uh, and times 0.1 let's see what what happens now okay now we can also adjust the frame rate again we can just um, delete this this line of code here nice okay so this is a very fluid motion and the a is going from the left to the right that's still a little bit fast let's just divide that by 10 all right that's a bit better maybe accelerate it a bit it <laughs> All right. Um, so now this is a little bit of math that I have to write in here because um, that's, you know, we just have to do something with 
um, each tile and you know it's maybe it's hard to find find out what exactly we have to do I got, I'm going to tell you what we have to do or what we what we can do here so what we can do here is putting x times y into that phase here into the section where we define the phase of the sine wave because you know in the nested for loop we have access to these variables x and y and that's cool because these variable variables vary in each iteration of the for loop right so the both numbers the x and the y are slightly different in each iteration when 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 we go through the for loop and that's why we get something like this let's see i really don't know how this will end up wow this is too fast let's slow that down again a little bit and well it's interesting i've never had an effect that you know these rectangles are very fast right and these are very very slow why is that that's because i'm multiplicating x and y here and um let's simplify this a little bit because i already wrote a nice function here that produces a very nice fluid wave i just copy paste it from the tutorial page here and let's run the sketch <music> Yeah, basically that's it. That's what I wanted to teach you. Hopefully you come up with something nice and uh, I would love to see your work. I really enjoyed making this uh, tutorial. See you next time and have a nice evening. Bye bye.